Hello and welcome to the uh, Charlie Hall special here on TV Yorkshire. We are going to be looking ahead uh, to the feature race on the card on Saturday afternoon at Weatherby, which is the Grade 2 Charlie Hall Chase. Potentially uh, the biggest race of the winter uh, here in Yorkshire in terms of uh, quality. Uh, some cracking horses uh, going to post. Let's hope that they all do run. Uh, joining me here in the studio are my two guests. I'm delighted to be joined by our Radio Yorkshire commentator, Gareth Topham, who is also a course commentator as well, and Racing Post journalist, David Carr. Gentlemen, a very good evening to you. Now, just to let you know, we are pre-recording this. It's currently Wednesday evening, five past nine uh, to be precise, so things could change between now and, uh, and, and Saturday afternoon. So if we're talking about a horse that may go and run over in Ireland, just be aware that uh, Wednesday evening is when we're pre-recording our Charlie Hall special. And as I say, a lot can happen between now and Saturday afternoon. Gentlemen, it's that time again. Jumps time here in Yorkshire. Uh, David, I'll start with yourself first. You have mentioned you've been speaking to uh, John Joe Sanderson, the clerk of the course, earlier today. Indeed. The good news is, looks like we're going to get some decent jumping ground. Now, 12 millimetres rain today, more to come tomorrow at Friday. His best guess at this stage, good to soft, good in places by the time they start on Friday afternoon. And uh, Gareth, if, if the horses are going to run what have been entered, We've got a cracking renew on his hands. Yeah, we have. It's always an exciting race, isn't it? The Charlie Hall Chase. The traditional sort of season open. I know we have the old row in these days, but uh, the Charlie Hall, from when I was a, a kid, you know, the Charlie Hall was always the first real biggie of the season. And like you say, we've got some fantastic entries. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the majority of these turn up, are going to be in for an absolute corker come Saturday afternoon. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. If you are thinking what to do Saturday afternoon, if your football team are playing away, make sure you get yourself over to Weatherby and enjoy a fantastic afternoon of racing, which of course features the uh, the West Yorkshire Hurdle as well, won last year by Cole Harden, who went on to win at the Cheltenham Festival, winning the World Hurdle. Now, gentlemen, let's get straight to it. Let's talk about Q Card, who was going to make his uh, a seasonal uh, debut here, originally ridden by Joe Tizard, Dowell Jacob rode him for last year, Paddy Brennan is going to run in for the first time on Saturday. Gareth, how do we rate Q-Cast chance? Yeah, I think he's got a, a really good chance. I mean, he's a nine-year-old now, and, and he, he has been around for a while, Q-Card. I remember him in that, that Fontwell bumper all those years ago where he, he sort of impressed and sprung onto the scene. And uh, each season, he's just uh, got better and better, really. But perhaps with the exception of, uh, of last season, uh, which was possibly just a little bit disappointing. I remember that run at Exeter um, at the start of the term where he was expected to do really well and it never really happened for him. Uh, he's now a nine-year-old. I mean, if you go back to the sort of form which uh, saw him win that, that, that mm. Betfair chase at Haydock, he was, he was mightily impressive that day. And, and this track wouldn't be too different, would it, to Haydock, really? Mm. It's, it's around about a mile and a half round. It's left-handed. Yeah. It's pretty flat. Uh, and when the fences come up, uh, they do come up pretty quickly. And, and one of Cue Card's strengths is he mm. is a pretty good jumper. And if you can get into a them around Weatherby, um, you're laughing, and, and Q Card, I think he's got that, that sort of nimble sort of action, mm -hmm. and he might just take a bit of catching, but he's going to have to be uh, something like his, his old self, I think, to fend off a few of these. We've got a couple of new younger horses mm -hmm. coming into the, the equation here, and um, for me, Q Card's going to have to do better in this than was the case uh, last season where he ran uh, yeah. a handful of times, but I don't think ever really showed his best back last term. Well, the good thing is, there mm. could just be a physical explanation for that. The trainer has come out and said, he thinks he had a trapped epiglottis, mm. which can mm. excuse many things. That's been sorted. He's apparently been working well. He's had a, a gallop at Wincanton. The good thing about having a bad season last year is he doesn't have a penalty for this race. He's no. getting weight, whereas this time last year he'd be giving them all weight. Mm. He doesn't have to be at his tip-top very best to go very close in a, a race, which, as you say, suits his style. He's got mm. to come from behind Chaser. He likes to be up there. That's what you need around, around, around Weatherby. And uh, Paddy Brennan as well rides in for the first time. Thoughts on Paddy taking the mount on Saturday? Go yeah, I think he, he's a very, very good pilot, isn't he? I mean, he's mm -hmm. a Gold Cup winning jockey. And uh, you never know, it might, just, it might just freshen the horse up a little bit as well, having somebody uh, different uh, in the saddle. And uh, yeah, definitely no negatives there. Anything else to mention there? Are you a Q-Cod fan at all? Yeah, and, and he's, he's not susceptible to the ground. No. They get the rain on, it doesn't. 
That will make no difference to him. And he has won well, uh, fresh in the past as well, which sometimes uh, can be proved to be key. Let's talk about some of the rivals then uh, to Q Card. He's currently heading the market at the moment. Uh, he's, he's joined anti-post favourite with uh, Dynastils, who's already made his appearance this year when we saw him finish ninth in a toy. What do you think of that uh, seasonal appearance for Dynast, David? If Dinas was in the form he was in this time last year, he'd have an amazing chance. He ran really well on the Betfair, ran really well on the King George, mm -hmm. ran at Cheltenham after, then missed the rest of the season through injury, yep. made his comeback in a hurdle race in France. On the face of it, that wasn't a very good run, wasn't anywhere like his peak form. Jockey is quick to say the trip was too short, he doesn't think it was a bad run. You're taking on chance just what sort of form he's in, you don't mm -hmm. know. Like Cucard, though, he escapes any penalty. And so, again, yep. he doesn't have to be a tip-top chaser to go very well getting weight from some of these other horses. But equally, you're taking things on trust. You just don't know. And, Gareth, anything? Uh, are you a Dinas fan? Do you think potentially he can do it? As, as David said as well, he's got no weight, uh, potentially, uh, just, just like Cucard as well. So they're kind of in the same boat if you put it in that respect. Yeah, absolutely. Like Hugh Cardi, he's got to prove his, his well-being, I suppose, as mm -hmm. much uh, as anything. I mean, he's had that run, but, you know, he came ninth in that race. He was never mm -hmm. really going. Um, all right, it was over a trip which was perhaps a little bit too short. It was in very testing ground, but he's got form in testing ground. I mean, he won a, he won a grade one Felton novice chase around, around Kempton in, in very yep. testing ground a few years ago. You know, he comes into this race on the back of that ninth, and it was just unlike Dinas. Dinas mm -hmm. has never really been that far back in any run in his entire career. So, so for me, uh, I, I, I still think at a, at a likely short price, he's probably got just a little bit to prove. He wouldn't be my idea um, of a bet at the prices. But like David says, if he returns mm. to his, his best, mm. which he could, I mean, yeah, he's a yeah, nine-year-old yeah. now, but if he returned to the sort of form uh, that we saw him in um, at his peak, uh, mm -hmm. then he must have an excellent mm -hmm. chance with, of course, that, that weight allowance that he'll get. Yeah. What about Holywell? Uh, for John Joe O'Neill now, everybody knows with him, he is a spring horse. He, mm. He's a horse that can do it in the spring. We were talking about it earlier on. He, he's never won before January. Mm. He's, like, he's like peaking, you know, as, mm. as the national hunt season. He's, he's getting into his closing stage, if you like. But we saw him run and beat a chase day at Aintree when he unseated the rider in, that, in the list of steeplechase. Mm. I thought he ran a cracker in, in the Cheltenham Gold Cup when he, when he finished third. He then went on to finish third at Aintree yeah. behind Sylvian Arco Conte. Have we got to wait till the spring with him, David? Yeah, he's a horse. Forget the form book, consult the calendar. <laughs> Irish point to point, the only race that ever won before January. If you were at Carla last year when he made a you'd never thought he would get in the Gold Cup field. <laughs> Let alone run so well. It's possible, horses always change, perhaps he'll turn over a new leaf. But you look through history, Every year he gets better and better. Mm -hmm. It's his form in the spring. It's not spring out there, nor it'll be on Saturday. I'd give it a month or two or three or four before you're really getting into Hollywell. Fair, fair comments there, I would say, Gareth from David. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember calling this horse home, actually, to win at uh, Catterick, of all places, uh, a couple mm. of years ago. And uh, I didn't think then that, you know, he'd be a Gold Cup contender uh, sort of year on from that. You know, he has uh -huh. improved out of, out of all recognition. He's always mm. been very useful. Yeah. Um, of course, he won that big hurdle race, uh, the staying hurdle race at the Cheltenham Festival. He big did, handicap yep. mm. uh, a few seasons back. Mm. He's always been very useful. But as a chaser, he really has improved uh, massively over the last couple of years. But like David says... He's generally a horse who performs at his best in the spring with a little bit of that slightly warmer stuff, a bit of sunshine on his back. And I just wonder uh, whether he'll be able to do himself justice for his first start for quite a long time. So as you can uh, see now, we're going through uh, quite a few uh, of the horses. We mentioned Q Card, we mentioned Dinas, and we mentioned the spring horse, uh, Holywell too. Uh, what we're going to do now, though, we're going to speak to uh, the trainer, Rebecca Curtis, who uh, at the moment has got two uh, entered for the Charlie Hall. Question mark over the run for Pelly. He may be uh, running at Ascot. But earlier on, myself and Gareth spoke to Rebecca about the chance of Irish Cavalier. Here's what she had to say. Newton Abbott may be a little bit sharp for him, and obviously his um, minimal trip, but it did it nicely and seems to have improved from last season. So I think it'd just be interesting Saturday, see how he goes. And you say, Rebecca, uh, this horse, uh, he was impressive uh, back in October at Newton Abbott. He's a horse who seems to take his racing very well. He ran at all the big festivals uh, last season, including, including twice at Punchestown. He did, yeah. I mean, I would never dream of... Um, you know, running a horse twice in one week there, but, you know, when we went to Punchestown, he ran his first race there, and the next day was busting, screaming, ate everything up. He's, uh, 
just a bit of a boy, really. He's like a child. He's always <laughs> just always, always on the go. Racing seems to take nothing out of him. He's the same with his bits of work at home. So um, that was the only reason he ran twice then. And as you can see, it didn't seem to affect him running a couple of days earlier in the second run, you know. And a few of the trainers uh, that have got the, the horses entered uh, for Saturday's race, Rebecca, they're slightly concerned uh, about the ground. Now, I, I can tell you that, that today in particular, it has been uh, raining quite bad, and I'm led to believe that uh, Weatherby has uh, suffered quite a bit of rain as well. So they're, they're slightly concerned about the ground. To be, to be fair to Irish Cavalier, uh, the, if, if there is a little bit of juice in the ground, that, that won't bother him as he's got the form on soft. Yeah, he has got the form and soft, but um, I mean, one thing I should mention, though, I do think he does act best on good ground, so it'll be interesting, actually, how he does hand handle, you know, a lot softer surface. I don't know how soft the ground is going to be, but I know there's a lot more rain due, isn't there? So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting, because it was fairly quick that day in Newton Abbott. And um, Rebecca, if if he did go well on on Saturday, what what would be the, the the plans for the remainder of the season? Obviously, we're quite early on at the moment. Well, I mean that's a big question, I suppose. Saturday, um, he went at six pounds for Newton Abbott. He's on, now on one five six. Unless he goes very well, you know, in the Charlie Hall, he's going to be a horse that's going to be quite hard to face, I suppose, because he's at the top of the handicaps now. So he's either going to be you know, a graded horse or not, which is going to be the big test on Saturday. Um, initial sort of thoughts for him was a Paddy Power this season, but speaking to Paul Townend after uh, the Newton Abbott race, he did say, you know, a race like that, you probably get done by a horse on low weights there. So he said, now's the time to try him at graded level. Um, which is obviously what we're going to do on Saturday. So I think it'll be interesting how much he has improved and if he is going to be a grade one horse for the season. Yeah, absolutely. And and would you say, uh, what what would his optimum trip be? Obviously, he's got form at, at sort of in excess of, of three miles, but he, he's clearly a horse with plenty of speed as well. Yeah, he has. I mean, he does, he's got a high cruising speed, but I would say probably um, one thing he does is stay very well. So I'd say he is a three-miler. If you notice in Cheltenham, even last year when he went, he was outpaced a couple of times and he stayed on very well up the hill. And it was noted in his Town races, um, you know, all he did was stayed. And I think they raced slightly different in Ireland where it was a bit slower and then just, you know, more of a sprint on at the end, which caught him out. Um, so I'd say, yeah, definitely the three-miler. And you mentioned there uh, Irish Cavalier, uh, despite having an entry over in Ireland and at, at Ascot as well. You said Irish Cavalier is going to run in, in the Charlie Hall. Now, another one of your horses that's also entered, got two entries for Saturday. Uh, that's the Romford Pelly. He's, he's entered for the Charlie Hall. He's also entered for Ascot. Where, where, where's he going to run on Saturday, Rebecca? Um, I'd say he'll go to Ascot. He's definitely a horse that... Um... I think he'll suit the track a bit better, more of a same uh, track in Ascot. Um, so, I mean, I think we'll probably go for the Cheltenham race. The, I think it's a three-mile three, the next meeting with him. And he's slightly out the weight for the Charlie Hall, so I think he'll be you know, better in the race than Ascot Saturday and probably get his ground. He definitely wants better ground. It's going to be soft and weathery. Rebecca Curtis speaking to myself and Gareth uh, earlier on about the two horses uh, that she has got entered for the Charlie Hall. She did say, though, as you heard, that Ron for Pelly will run at Ascot on Saturday, but uh, Irish Cavalier will make the trip from Wales all the way up to West Yorkshire. David, I'll start with yourself first. Uh, how do you rate Irish Cavalier's chances on uh, Saturday? He's a fascinating horse. He's, he's the least exposed runner in the field. He's only his second season chasing. But it isn't one of those ultra tough races you need a vast amount of experience. Mm. Two of the last three winners have been six year olds like him, yeah. like Topper and Silver Nyako Conti. I was at Cheltenham when he won the big two mile five handi Norris handicap chase last season. He looked every inch a three mile chaser in the making. Mm -hmm. He'd be well suited by this. The ground's not going to be that soft. I think that's key. He does want decent sort of ground. And I think he's going to run very well. 
he has got the, the, the form on, on other ground. You know, we, we saw him win on, on, on ground that's a bit softer, but now Rebecca's saying that ideally, you know, she just wants it to be, you know, more to the good uh, th th than anything else. And if we look at last season in particular, he also ran at some of the big festivals as well. He did, yeah. He ran at, at, at all the big festivals. He ran at Cheltenham, Aintree and Punchestown. He ran at Punchestown mm -hmm. twice. Uh, he's clearly a horse, David, who takes his racing very well, which is which is such a good thing, particularly for a young horse. Um, he's only six years old uh, still, this Irish Cavalier, and you know he came back with a with a pretty impressive win at Newton Abbott. I know it was a much softer affair than than what this will be come Saturday afternoon, but um, he only won the race by half a length. Mm -hmm. He won it quite snugly, despite not jumping a final fence too fluently on that occasion. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be one of the fitter runners in this race. He comes into the race with a run, with a mm -hmm. win under his belt, and for me, he's the one horse in this race um, who is really going forward. There, there, there's one or two others, but, but this horse, he's only a six-year-old. He's, mm. he's the young horse in the race going forward, if you like. And, and I think he's going to run a, a big race at, at probably tasty odds. And it is a long way to come, isn't it? You know, all, all the way from Wales up to, to West Yorkshire. She wouldn't come all the way if she didn't think it could win. True, but that doesn't mean it's going to win. True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I see. That, that's a fair point. That, so we, we've spoke about quite a, a few of the horses so far. A horse we do need to mention, though, is last year's winner, uh, Minora. He, he won last year, he beat Tarquin de Soy, he beat Double Ross, and of course, Sylvain Arco Conti, uh, that finished fifth. Spoke to Richard Johnson a few weeks back at the opening fixture at Weatherby. He said then Minori is, is going to come uh, up to Weatherby again. He's going to defend his crown, uh, if you like. Key to him, though, Gareth, it's all about the ground. Yeah, he's a horse who, well, back last season, uh, those two wins, he ran uh, five times. Yeah. Uh, he won twice. He won his first start this race. Uh, he also won his last start at Sandown. Um, they were both on, on good ground. Now, he is a horse who, who in the past has won on slightly yeah. uh, on ground with slightly more give. Mm -hmm. uh, but generally, I think as he's getting older, isn't it? he's a 10-year-old now, um, maybe just does want a, a decent service. But I'm not too sure, with what John Joe Sanderson has told you, David, I'm not too sure the ground's going to be actually that bad on, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. I know there's been a lot of rain in the area, but I don't think if he's, if he's beaten, um, we'll be blaming the ground too much uh, come the day. Uh, he's a very talented He seemed to have a sort of rejuvenation back last year didn't he he was nine year old but what a season he had um his his best season for a while mm -hmm. and if he's in the same sort of form come saturday uh, he's going to be bang there again there's every reason to think he will be philip hobbs mm -hmm. does so well these these veteran is, is is not the right word but these these experienced chasers wishful thinking went very close to winning the old round for the second year in a row last weekend there's no reason to why menora shouldn't go close himself absolutely and there'll be no jockey in the race who's riding with more confidence will there no, and, and Minora, he, he could very well do a Seymour business. 1999, he won the Charlie Hall. He then went on to win it again in 2000. So Minora uh, looking to defend his crown and uh, win the Charlie Hall chase for a second year. Now, uh, this horse, we've, we've left towards the end, and there's every reason. Horse in the field, many clouds. He won the Hennessy Gold Cup uh, last November. He then went on to win the Bet Bright Cup chase at Cheltenham. And then he went and won the big one, the Grand National. David Carr, can many clouds, as part of his prep for the Hennessy, come up to Weatherby and win the Charlie Hall? Well, the frightening thing is, you've listed all his big race wins last year. He's only been in training three and a half years. There's no reason to think he couldn't still be on the up. Mm -hmm. Which is a worrying thing to say for a horse that's already rated 167. Uh, it didn't, a lot of Grand National winners are at the end of their career and they're virtually approaching retirement. Mm -hmm. No Grand National winner has won another race since Bindari back in, in 2003. Mm -hmm. But he's not a horse like Bindari. He's still got relatively few miles on the clock. You'd think there's more still to come from him. And provided there's decent give in the ground, if there isn't, he won't run. Mm -hmm. then there's no reason at all why he shouldn't give a very good account of himself. He's won first about the last two seasons. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was the small doubt I had, the fact that he was a Grand National winner. And generally, horses that win the Grand National, they, they well, f history will tell you, they, they don't tend to win again. As you say, Dave, Bindery was the last one mm -hmm. um, who won the National in 2002. Yeah. I think he then won the Welsh National, didn't he? The following he? year. The, the yeah. following year. But, but as you say, Many Clouds, he's not your typical Grand National winner. He could no. still be on the up. He's... You know, he's only had 20 starts over jumps in his entire career. He's only an eight-year-old. Mm -hmm. and I think it's fair to say of all the runners in, in Saturday, for, he's the most feasible Gold Cup winner, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he'd say so. I mean, all right, that was the only race that he got beaten mm -hmm. back last year. He won the other three. 
but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't take too much away from him um, no, for that at all. At all. No. Um, and and as you say, he, he he really could be one in this race who's still going forward. And um, he's an absolute class act. He was mm. a very very classy Grand National winner. He did it in a top time under yeah. a big mm. weight. So just quickly, David, any more horses you want to mention in the Charlie Hall? We do have to give a mention to Bally Nagore. Mm -hmm. A really good second at Aintree yeah. back in April. Can go well fresh. My one doubt, he's a hold-up horse. I don't think he's going to be suited by this type of race. And uh, it's come to that time of the, the programme now here uh, on TV Yorkshire of our Charlie Hall special when I say, right then, lads, let's have some tips from you. Let's have, not to say tips, but let's have a tip. You know, what's going to win uh, the Charlie Hall on Saturday. David, I'll start with yourself, sir. I reckon the safest selection is Menorah. Worked last year, why change a winning system? No reason why I shouldn't run another very big race. So it's Menorah for David to win it for second year. Gareth? I'd love to see many clouds win, but I'm going to take a chance with the Irish Cavalier. He's the young horse in this race. He went forward at a rate of knots last season. He's come mm. back already this season with an impressive victory. Uh, so he's going to be nice and fit. I'm going to take him uh, to, to take this upward curve within his stride. And he might just reward at good odds. And I'm going to go for Q Card uh, to win uh, the Charlie Hall on Saturday. Uh, seasonal appearance. And uh, I'm hoping he's going to get off to win it. And he's a personal favourite of mine, so I can't really go against him. <laughs> uh, now, gentlemen, thank you very much for thank your you. time here on our, on our Charlie Hall special. Uh, so that's it. We, we've gone through with the majority uh, of the horses uh, running on Saturday. As I say, please remember that this has been pre-recorded uh, on, uh, on Wednesday evening. So if you are watching this on a Saturday, a lot of things can happen uh, between now and then. Thank you very much for watching the show and uh, we will see you again very soon. Goodbye for now.